One talks about the wonders of modern science, but seldom thinks of the simple things scientists are doing. In this demonstration of practical chemistry, for example... Hi everyone. In this video, I will show you how to make a beautiful copper complex. This is a pink one, which is fairly uncommon when talking about copper complexes. For this video, you are going to need copper sulfate and sodium dichloroisocyanate. Those are the main two reagents, and both of them you should be able to get at any Lowe's or Home Depot or other hardware store. If you are wondering where I got this experiment, it is from a U.S. patent linked down below and also on screen right now. Before continuing, you must understand that sodium dichloroisocyanate, henceforth known as NADCC, starts to decompose as soon as you open the bottle. That means that it will be releasing chlorine gas and you have a small window of opportunity to do this reaction. And also, chlorine gas is very gnarly stuff. You need to ensure that you work in a well-ventilated area. First, we will begin by tearing a measuring boat and adding about 10 grams of copper sulfate into it. And we're going to need to add this into hot water as soon as possible. Copper sulfate likes to take its sweet time to dissolve, so we need to get it dissolving as soon as possible. Likewise, we are going to measure about 10 grams of NADCC into a teared boat, but we are going to add it to room temperature water. If you don't, it will kind of make your lab smell like pool cleaner, and that's not good for anybody. We're going to add the weighed solids into beakers. We're going to fill them up with appropriate hot and cold water, and we're going to give them a lot of time to dissolve. Once dissolved, I added a little bit of the copper sulfate solution into the NADCC solution. You can see that as this reaction starts up, a milky precipitate kind of forms and then is dissolved away. And then almost immediately it turns this deep purple color. This deep purple color is the copper complex that we're looking for. It's insoluble in water, so you'll see that as the reaction starts to come to completion, it's going to fall down to the bottom of the beaker. Now in the video I'm adding it incrementally, but that's not necessary. You can just dump the two beakers together, but I found this to be a much more beautiful reaction. Now the observant of you will look in the beaker and see that a lot of the copper sulfate goes unreacted. And this is okay, copper sulfate's cheap and I didn't go for a yield based experiment. You can see on the beaker there's this nice purple inorganic insoluble layer. And when you agitate it, a little bit of the molecules kind of hop up, almost like it's boiling, and they give this snow globe-like effect, sort of like the golden rain experiment we did a month ago. The next step of this experiment poses a little bit of a problem. See, our solution is really basic right now, and because it's so basic, it will actually eat through these coffee filters. I ended up having to run multiple filtrations on this because the filter papers just kept breaking on me. Ideally, this is what a filtration should look like, albeit a lot slower. This is what a broken filter paper looks like. Now, because it's insoluble, there's a lot that's going to be left behind if you do gravity filtration. So try to scrape out as much as you can and put it on the filter paper and run water over it to try to get any contaminants off. After a few days of drying, it's finally ready to be taken off the filter paper and powderized. Now that the solid has been completely powderized, I'm going to go ahead and transfer it to a small dram vial. And this is the compound in all of its glory. I may have said that it's pink throughout the video and it's more of a lilac color but during the reaction it was very deep purple so I'm not sure what hue you would call this but a lot of papers especially the one I linked uh, define it as a lilac color so that might be a better name for what this is so now that the compound has been stored I do have a little bit of excess to play with so I'm going to go ahead and try out a few of these reactions I found online now first is the decomposition of this using hydrogen peroxide now the exact reaction called for around 30% hydrogen peroxide, which I was unable to actually acquire for this video. It's supposed to emit this nice red glowing color. 
Um, but you'll see in the video, it didn't actually get this. It just kind of bubbled and released a whole bunch of oxygen and a little bit of chlorine, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, though. Now what's left in the container, I believe, is copper hydroxide, and this is kind of indicative by the color, and, well, simply because I started with copper sulfate, so it would seem to reason that a very basic solution would produce a copper hydroxide. This next reaction will prove the valence state of the copper in solution. I added in some hydrochloric acid and it seems that after this addition a whole bunch of white insoluble precipitate is formed. You can see that even with swirling the particulates do not dissolve, which means that this is indeed an insoluble copper complex. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to leave a comment down below and tell me what you thought of this experiment. Um, also, I am on social media now, so be sure to check in there to see more videos that don't quite make it to the YouTube channel. Again, thank you all for watching, and have a great day.